everyone and welcome to the Adam Josh Oral Brog. Welcome to the Brog. My name is Adam and uh, here we are. Yeah, I just got in from watching Contagion and uh, I had a blog earlier, a brog earlier. I did a video earlier that uh, I talked about some other things and I ended up deleting it. So here we are, a job 62. You know, I, uh, I, the benefit of having your own website and not being, uh, uh, I'm being independent as I am. I'm not, I don't feel pressure and I'm not under pressure to do things when I don't want to or what I'm not feeling it. And, uh, the last two, uh, brog I'd video ideas that I had I wasn't feeling so uh, this one I actually was like ill in the theater you know like my whatever you want to call it the inside your soul your spirit it was like vomiting in the theater there's so much propaganda uh, psychological operations and double talk in the movie Contagion that it's it was, it's really almost unbearable and uh, with a star-studded cast too Lawrence Fishburne, Kate Winslet, Jude Law uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and of course the uh, always articulate Matt Damon and uh, oh man I mean I should have I should have known right away going into the theater that I, you know I noticed why am I getting dirty looks you know I'm walking into the theater with uh, two biohazard tattoos on me and the whole movie's about a biological plague and uh, I'm wondering why am I getting dirty looks people are looking at me weird and then I'm like oh yeah that um, in the in the in the movie, like where do I even start? It's just so loaded with uh, psyops. In the uh, in the movie, people who, uh, I think it was Lawrence Fishburne's character or somebody else says uh, he refers to people who blog as uh, I don't I don't think it actually was Lawrence Fishburne's character, but uh, they say people who blog blogging is like graffiti with punctuation and uh, Jude Law's character plays the uh, Alex Jones or the uh, Luke Rudkowski Luke Rudowski character or the uh, my character the, the guy who gets on his website and talks but the difference between Jude Law's character and me is that um, in the movie, Jude Law's character get expo gets exposed for uh, selling what he says is a cure when uh, and making $4 million. And uh, I haven't made uh, $4 million off of anything that I've done. Is <laughs> so, and nor am I trying to uh, sell anybody anything, really. Do I sell anything? I don't know. No, I don't. But, I mean, watching... watching uh, Watching, I have a donate. I have a donate button on my about or a boot section on the website, and uh, I don't get many donations. And you know, I have a job, so I'm not looking for funding from anybody. I just figured, hey, I give them all my music away for free, and uh, blog for free. And if anybody wanted to help increase my operation, maybe my quality of camera, studio, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then that would be. Uh, I would use it for that, but uh, I'm not. I don't get many donations, so I'm not concerned about it. It's not top of my list of things to do, and obviously, that I'm not running a professional offer operation with staff here. It's just uh, me brogging. Where do we even start, though? I mean, okay, so uh, the movie is about a, a biological plague uh, being released and wiping out giant chunks of the population. In the movie, the CDC and the World Health Organization, of course, take the prominent role of, okay, we're stepping up to the plate to, uh, to take the role of, uh, of uh, 
helping solve the problem and uh, Jude Law's blog ca blogging character is the character that says that it's a conspiracy and uh, you know uh, they have the cure but they're holding out and um, you know Kate Winslet's character is uh, on the front lines with the CDC trying to figure out the uh, trying to trace where the uh, where the disease started and and uh, so that's Kate Winslet's character and Gwyneth Paltrow's character is the uh, is the character that is where it started right so uh, I guess this is probably a spoiler alert spoiler alert for those of you who uh, plan on watching it you might want to turn this video off now so go to your top corner over there and click that X because uh, I'm really good at spoiling movies because that's what I do I just tell you how it is and the plot lines and I'm not really good at doing movie reviews uh, so sorry I'm just trying to find a song to put on okay so uh, it's just so bad you know and I'm it, it's so horrible. The movie is just so bad. So psychological opera. Such a psyop. It's such a, a mind job. So Matt Damon's character, he's immune to the, uh, to the uh, biological plague. And there's this, there's this, uh, there's this scene where the workers at the CDC are closing the, uh, you know, putting the the, the uh, disease and the and the cure away or whatever, right when they've uh, after they've finished, you know, towards the end of the movie, once they've cured the disease, and uh, on top of the, uh, I think it's called have one or have one, or I don't I forgot what the name of the disease is in the movie. On top of that is uh, H1N1, and on top of that is SARS. They uh, they reference the swine flu and say how oh people won't believe this we shouldn't let anybody know until everybody knows because then uh, we'll be over hyping it like we did the swine flu and and uh, the the piece de resistance the icing on the cake for me was when the end of the movie where this the Matt Damon's daughters boyfriend all he wants to do is make out with his girlfriend and uh, his daughter through the movie and, and Matt Damon scares him off with a shotgun in one scene and and uh, and uh, you know basically let, doesn't let him around because he's afraid for his daughter he doesn't know if she's immune like he is and then at the end you know it's pr her prom night and uh, he comes to the door with his bracelet on the bracelet proving that he's had the vaccine and he flashes the uh, the bracelet, and it's like you're sp uh, the audience. You're supposed to be like, "All right, that's a good thing. He's got the he's got the bracelet. All right." And so in the movie, they they have you wearing a bracelet along with the vaccine, uh, and the vaccine goes out to everybody. And people just like they want that vaccine so bad, they make events of it. Let's sit down and do the vaccine together. And um, there's one scene where where uh, they give the vaccine uh, out and it's like a big deal. Uh, Lord Fishburne gives it to his wife and the next scene is flashing to a, uh, a box of uh, like a gift wrapped and immediately my mind went to, oh, somebody's giving them the vaccine as a present and all these psychological operations that are going on that uh, basically the CDC, World Health Organization uh, are good. The vax Take your vaccines because they're all, all only good and uh, internet bloggers are bad and people who conspiracy who who think the government uh, is anything other than benevolent are conspiracy theorists and everybody in government loves you and uh, only 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 the bloggers and people that are on the internet are trying to turn a profit it's nothing like uh, corporate uh, private interests trying to turn profit and they they don't tend to say it towards the end of the movie what uh, what company is going to be 
uh, making all the money from selling the vaccines. They in the movie they turn um, they turn stadiums into they turn stadiums into uh, makeshift uh, hospitals, and they have mass graves. I'm watching it, and they're they're when the people are dying. I guess in this in this. Uh, Disease, the 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 uh, it hits you in like three days or a day and a half, two days, and you're dead. So they have mass graves because they run out of graves, and no but no mortuary wants to take the bodies because they don't know how long you have to wait until you can touch a body or be around a body. And uh, so they have mass graves, and I'm thinking like, wow, I've seen video of stockpiled plastic coffins all over. The United States, and already FEMA has uh, centers and makeshift centers and makeshift facilities all over. And I'm just like, you're watching this, and you're like, what are? This is such a psyop, and they have such a great cast. And at the end, it says, you know, thank you to the CDC. Uh, oh, it's just such a such a a mind job. And uh, I feel for people who go into that movie and allow themselves to be, or allow that brainwashing to happen. And I come out and you're thinking, wow, it's just a movie, right? Oh, good, it's so glad it's over, it's just a movie. And uh, then I'm thinking, man, I've been watching chemtrails this last few days. Today I've been seeing chemtrails all over. I just was going to talk earlier about the fluoride in my toothpaste and how I've had to buy children's toothpaste this last two times. And here's the uh, first time that I went. I've talked about it before. Kids pre-step, fluoride free, says on the top. And this is the last thing that I bought. My first ages 0 to 2 fluoride free. And they mention... Um, they mention uh, Lawrence Fishburne's character in the movie says, "Well, how are we going to deliver this vaccine? Maybe we should we should uh, medicate, mass medicate the uh, the population like we do we did with fluoride." And they mention that in the in the movie, and I'm just like, it's such a, a psyop is the only way I can put this a propaganda psyop straight from the pits of backwards land. And uh, all I can say is if there's a bio plague that starts wiping off uh, massive amounts of people, uh, it's not the result of uh, a bat eating something and dropping it on a pig and the pig eats something and then somebody doesn't wash their hands and now we have this global plague of killing. I'm not... Uh, I don't work at the CDC though and have lots of uh, letters after my name so nobody will believe me anyway. But uh, you know, I come out of the theater I'm just like, oh my god, what a psychological operation, oh my god. My head hurts and, uh, and then I'm thinking, the chemtrails in the sky, fluoride in the water, chlorine and all that and I'm thinking, we are under attack. And I'm not the type of person to say that. Like, it's that coming from every every angle. Like, I, I don't consider myself a sheep. But uh, even those people who say they, they don't and they stand up to the quote-unquote New World Order and all that. I mean, you can laugh. They, they could, The people in the New World Order or whatever can just laugh at you. I mean, you can say whatever you want. But at the end of the day, you have your credit card and you have your bank account and you have your car and your mortgage payments and you can say whatever you want you know we'll pat you on the head you can say whatever you want yell at us all you want how you're not our slave but but the proof is in the pudding so things like that watching this movie and seeing you know re realizing that prince philip has said uh, in the from the uh, from the uk has has said he would like to come back as a bio plague reduce the population. These guys are nuts. This Al Gore is on his 24 hours of BS campaign tonight. 
Um, we're being told uh, by Bill and Melinda Gates that, you know, uh, infanticide and abortion and Planned Parenthood and, you know, Al Gore talks about uh, abortion and the Georgia Guidestones talked about reducing the population to the manageable figure of, what is it, 500 million? Uh, all the top brass and czars of the uh, Obama administration are all eugenicists. This uh, John P. Holdren character, eugenicist, talks about reducing the population. Uh, ugh. It hurts my head. Because... I guess a part of me wants to think that that it's just a, it was just a movie. A part of me wants to think that it's just not, it's not real. But like as I go outside, well, the chemtrails that I can clearly see with my own eyeballs, and the ones and the chemtrails that all my friends know about and that we talk about, and the fluoride that's admittedly in the city water, not here but in other cities, that's not a movie. That's really happening. When, and the movie's telling you to look to the government for answers and trust the government, and it's like, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Trust these, trust these people. I'm going to bring the troops home from Iraq. I'm going to send 70,000 more troops to Iraq. I'm going to close Guantanamo Bay. We can't close Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> you know, we're supposed to trust. It's just, oh my, it's just so blatant and in your face and bad and over the top and maybe that's what all this barrage of insanity is, is, is trying to do is to overwhelm the human psyche and overwhelm people who can who can sort of uh, see who have the glasses on and can sort of see what's going on I don't cons I don't know the truth of everything I think I've I've said before like what would it be like to know the truth of everything? I don't know if your brain, uh, average human brain can handle that. And I don't think that... I don't think uh, humans will know the truth of everything completely, 100%. Because there's so much to know and... And, uh, but anyway, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that I know everything. But the truth that I know and the truth that I stand for holding it up to this movie and then watching this movie and knowing that average people or kids are going to go in and watch this it makes you want to throw up like Hillary Clinton apologizing for purposely infecting Guatemalans with STDs it's open knowledge now and open source information that the that the United States government has tested uh, aerosol chemtrails on major cities they openly talk about putting lithium in the water. They are putting fluoride in the water. People don't uh, debate that uh, fluoride was first used by IG Farben in the Nazi death camps. One of the main ingredients in Prozac, main ingredient in cockroach killer, main, in main ingredient in a whole bunch of psychotropic drugs. And then that's not enough. They also want to put lithium in the water. You know, it's it's so over the top scientific technopoly dictatorship in your face brazen and bold and like mafia style this is what we're gonna do you don't like it we're gonna release a bio plague on you how about that and kill a few million of you in the movie I think it was three or four million by the time it was over, I, I don't know. And uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know Matt Damon. You know, I don't know him from Joe Schmo down the street. I don't know anything about him really, other than the movies. I, I liked a few of his movies, but I got to admit, I lost respect for for him because I consider him some somewhat articulate and somewhat intelligent. So I would assume that he would know the truth of some of the things that that have come out uh, regarding uh, plagues, bioplagues, vaccinations, and all that, and, uh, and glorifying the government and, and uh, making uh, internet bloggers out to be the bad guys and uh, the government and CDC and who, who, or, who organization, which is a created organization, you know, like any, 
the whole, look into the or, origins of the WHO or the, the CDC, you know what I mean? Like, they use FEMA, and the National Guard, Red Cross, all these organizations co-opted and run at the highest levels by eugenicist, Nazi, population reducing globalists, you know, and uh, that's a sad truth. Uh, I lost respect for Matt Damon I watching this movie and everybody else in the movie. I never had much respect for anybody else. I mean, Lawrence Fishburne was pretty sweet in uh, Matrix, and I'll hand it to Kate Winslet for uh, her role in the Titanic, I suppose. Uh, and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, I don't really remember much of anything that she has done. Other than being married to Gavin Rosdale. Good for you. And um, the other one. Oh, Jude Law. He was good in uh, The Island. I think it was called The Island. And uh, anyway, I don't know what their deal is. Maybe it's just a money thing. Maybe it's just acting. Maybe they actually believe, like, hey, we're supporting, you know, vote and vote for your president and. Uh, and uh, government loves you. Government's never done anything wrong, like purposely infecting Guatemala's STDs. Government has never done anything wrong other than poisoning you, killing you with vaccines. And uh, anyway, I, I I don't consider myself a sheep, as I was saying earlier. And we can kick and scream and say I'm not a sheep, and you're, I'm not your slave. But the proof, like I was saying earlier, is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. Now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using the internet, I have a cell phone, I know that there's GPS tracking on a lot of things, and I guess to a certain extent, you, you can't get off the prison planet, or the prison grid, or the the uh, the grid. It's hard. What does it mean to get off the grid? I mean, the, if the grid is Earth, you have to go pretty far, and even then. So this is it. Some people are saying that uh, that this that's what Earth is. It's a prison planet. It's a. Uh, it's not only held. You know, we're not only held here by the Van Allen belts, but we're held here by our bodies. There's actual physical prisons. There's a constant war on the planet, There's, or a war planet, a conflict planet, a prison planet. We're held here for the maturing of our soul so that we can know to not live uh, with envy, hate, or greed, and so that we can live with, with integrity. Apparently these are, some people say these are the goals of our, of our soul to mature. And while we're here, you know, we have other people who have been here a lot longer, wealthy fa wealthy families and people who have amassed great amounts of wealth through industrial banking, through the profits and spoils of war and war funding and booty collecting and uh, gold stashing and uh, banking and uh, funding endless conflicts and black operations and cocaine and the heroin running and you know, the troops are growing and guarding the opium production in Afghanistan now, and the CIA is on record shipping cocaine, and there's lots of money to be made in the drugs, so these people who have amassed great amount of wealth uh, have learned how to systematically manipulate and control entire societies to the point where we are tagged and tracked almost like so much cattle. They put us and keep us in trances with celebrity and with television and uh, they feed us what they want to feed us through entertainment. We are told that like the most trivial things are idolized. So the most trivial things, that, it's like the tr more trivial the better. So like fashion, uh, you know, which seems to be so trivial in the sense of like global scale and global problems. Models get paid pretty well, you know, fashion, TV, there's entertainment tonight, uh, movies, celebrity, TMZs, and all that is what's important. Fashion magazines and all that, as trivial as it can get, that's what's more important. Octomoms, the John and Kate plus eights, 
But meanwhile, the people who are talking about truth and real issues, not that I'm at the tip of the spear or anything, but people who are, they're sidelined and considered conspiracy theorists, and we laugh at those people. And then we say, okay, now that we're done laughing at the uh, Alex Joneses, back to sports. Back to overpaid, half-wit, sometimes half-wit uh, athletes who play for a team that isn't from your area. They, you think they're from your area. Really, they're, they're from the, another country and they represent your team and they're paid massive amounts of money. Meanwhile, our doctors and our school teachers and our EMT workers and our policemen are, you know, and teachers, if I didn't already say that, I think I did, are struggling to make ends meet, but sports players can make multi-million dollars a year. So, and if that wasn't enough, they're dumbing you down and making your will to fight back their castrating the men, flipping the uh, the sex <laughs> with the bisphenol A, with the fluoride and chemicals in the water, unfiltered pharmaceuticals. Who knows what the combination of five vaccines in a row plus caffeine plus nicotine plus fluoride equals. I mean, have you done the studies? I haven't done the studies, so I try to stay away from all vaccines and chemicals in general. You know, when you add, take one chemical and add another and put them together, uh, you know, they say when you mix two things, mix like one drug and alcohol or whatever, it, it can increase or decrease the effects or make something entirely different. So if you have vaccine A and then sickness A and then chemical B, what do you get? I don't know. I don't want to know what's going to happen down the line with this uh, if these bio plagues if, if that's like a prepping for a real event, psychological prepping because uh, it just makes me sick to think about and I suppose truth be told there's some part of me that's always known that that's the future uh, one of the motivations for uh, getting these silly tattoos on myself, sort of a constant reminder that no matter uh, no matter what, this this is uh, this is where it's going, where it's headed. The good thing about bio plagues is uh, the um, the uh, sorry, it's. 10 o'clock at night here, and I'm about my bedtime. I'm about to head home. I just figured I'd stop in and record this. When you're not accountable, bleh, I can't think of the word, it's gonna bug me. Ugh. Anyway, bioplagues. There's, uh,. Plausible deniability was the word I was looking for. There's plausible deniability when it comes to bioplagues because, uh, you know, as the movie, what is it, Seven with Brad Pitt? Seven Monkeys? Twelve Monkeys. Twelve Monkeys. So I'm getting my two movies confused. But Twelve Monkeys also talks about a bioplague. And uh, I suppose that that and the alien invasion, if all, if all else fails, it seems to be what we're being prepped for. But to me, and a lot of those, a lot of the people watching this who have read the Book of Revelation a few times, or those the, the hardcore Christians out there, will watch this and know that what I'm saying, like about the the mark on the hand or the chip, like that's uh, always in the back of people's mind. Like, how is that going to come about? And uh, uh, keeping in mind, just like the book 1984 and how. The future is, uh, you know, the future is like they—they'll make it so you want 
You'll be crying for FEMA. You'll be you'll be crying out to go to the FEMA camps. You'll be crying. Put the chip on me. Give me the mark. They'll make it so you you desperately want it. And watching this movie, Contagion, has, it just made me think, yeah, that's one way they could make just make you beg. Because the, the kid, when he's dancing with his girlfriend at the prom in the house, he's, look, I got the bracelet. And it's a good thing. You know, you want that bracelet. You want that chip. Chip me. Look, I got the chip. Look, I got it. And he's supposed to be like, yeah, good for you. You got it, I got it too. And uh, it's such backwards land because people who have read the book of Revelation or who are sort of aware of this Aaron Russo type uh, insider baseball Illuminati future plan, look up Aaron Russo and uh, he's dead now, but you'll see what I'm saying. And uh, oh, it's just so over the top bad. And if you allow yourself time or your brain to think of how, how, could, be, how could they spin it to get a cashless society or to get all the mark, uh, to get a chip inside you so that it would be like beneficial or something good. One way would, you know, market it to old, old senile people. Look, you know, you, you can find your grandma now. Your grandma knows her shit. Her health records are always with her. That's one way. Another way is put anthrax on all currency and then, oh, ugh, I don't want to touch that currency. Well, what are we going to use? Use your debit cards. Instantly you've removed cash. Another way is to do a, have a bio plague. Where that everything they people were touching in the movie uh, was a spot to uh, deliver the germs to the next person. So of course they didn't they didn't uh, show it. They didn't even have the topic of money. But if uh, you know if people had money, obviously that would be a huge spot to uh, have the bio plague transferred around. But if you could take the bracelet and make it a chip and put it in your hand. Hey, problem solved. Look, I got the chip. I got the chip and the bracelet. And uh, look, I'm, I'm good and my money's there. Everything's fine. Just makes your brain go in knots. And I think, like I said, I think when I'm walking into the theater, I'm like, glad that's just a movie. But then all the reality sort of sinks in and the, and the news I've read over the years and the uh, open papers that uh, the John P. Holdrens have, have written and the uh, the crazy backwards eugenicist world that we live in starts filtering back in and you're like, wow, it's not a dream. Like, this is, it's actually not that far off, the movie Contagion. Contagion, it's not that far off from uh, reality. And even if that movie didn't exist, that doesn't change the fact that we're still being chemtrailed every day here in the area that I'm in. And we still have chemicals in our water. You know, we don't have fluoride, but a lot of people do. That doesn't stop the chemical onslaught from going in your toothpaste and in your gum. Go try to find chewing gum without aspartame in it right now. Not fluoride, aspartame. It's just so bad. And I feel like... Is this what sanity is? Is sanity looking at all this and feeling like you're crazy when you live in a world where people just go along with this? Or is sanity making that, choosing that mental suicide of ignorance is bliss and choosing that, choosing that phrase to hang up all your self-will and sense of inner challenge or I don't want to change to hang that up on that. Ignorance is bliss. Is that what sanity is? Is to choose to go along with whatever the government tells you is okay or whatever is mainstream? Everybody else is doing it so it must be good. I'm just doing what I'm told. I'm just doing my job, said the SS officer as he pulled the trigger into the Jewish family's head. And then when he was asked, he said, I was just doing what I was told. And Hitler is standing there saying, I didn't kill anybody. All I said was, we want to exterminate the, uh, the non-Aryan races. 
And uh, I mean, I told him to kill them, but I didn't do it. So I, he, the SS soldier is just in his mind taking orders, but he's physically the one killing people, just going along with whatever he's told. The George Bushes and the Dick Cheneys walk free. Meanwhile, the uh, soldiers get get uh, the brunt of the uh, the problems, get delisted, get their pensions, and military benefits taken away from them. Have uh, what death insurance? Uh, what is it? They have insurance on them. Peasant insurance on them. Such a weird backwards world we live in. And uh, is that what sanity is? To go along with the mainstream is is that am I wrong? Like for me, I know that truth is truth, and I want the truth. I love the truth. I side with the truth, even if it hurts. That's what I want. I want the truth. If the candy cane, if the world is a candy cane forest, then if that's the truth. Then let me know the truth. If that it, I don't think that's the truth, though. If the truth is that Santa Claus. And a little green, little green men created this whole entire world and structured it the way it is, and put the Keebler elves in charge of the government. I would want to know if that's the truth. If it's not the truth, I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure it's not. But if somebody could prove to me that's the truth, and that it was ultimately unquestionable, well, then that's what the truth is. Is it raining in this room right now? No. That's the truth. Are the lights on in the room? Yes, the lights are on in this room. That's the truth. If somebody came in here and said. It's raining and the lights are off in here. I could say, uh, I'm pretty sure it's not. The truth seems to be that you're lying. You know? I just want the truth. And when you hold up the truth and the evidence of the truth and the weight of the truth to your reality or what you see as a reality or movies like Contagion, it's like the propaganda and the psyop doesn't work. And I guess they can they don't they don't have time to to tell every detail and every facet of everything in a hour and a half movie, I suppose. I'll give the uh, whoever wrote the movie, directed it and produced it the benefit of the doubt in that regard. But uh What a uh, what a psyop that movie is. Roll up your sleeve and get your vaccines and trust your government, love your government, and distrust bloggers and internet sites and all those internet sites and bloggers that are trying to warn you. All they want to do is sell you snake oil. That's the one of the main messages of the movie. The subtext from me to you. I'm going to go to bed. Thanks for watching the Adam Josh Roll Brog.